to Bethel Christian Ministries. We're so glad that you came to worship the Lord with us. Let's just take a few minutes and greet those around us. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell them you're glad you, they came to church this morning.
Wanna bring you more than words, I answer the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. I answer the gates with nothing but thanks. I wanna magnify your word, I wanna bring you more than words, I answer the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll Bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. My feet on the battleground, my weapon will be my sound. I will not be silent, my song is my triumph. More than words, I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your words, I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart that wants you first. All for your glory, your glory. Sing, my soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. Sing, my soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar this place an altar sing my soul will sing my soul will make this place an altar make this place an altar sing my soul will sing my soul will make this place an altar make this place an altar I enter the gates with nothing but things I want to magnify your word I want to bring you more than words I enter the gates Come reckless with praise I bring a heart that wants you first All for your glory I enter the gates With nothing but things I want to magnify your word I want to bring you more than words I enter the gates Come reckless with praise I'll bring a heart that wants you first All for your glory Your glory Your glory Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Thank you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. There is an endless song that goes in. Keep from singing 
of scripture this morning as we stand Psalm 100 Amen Psalm 100 we want to welcome Iglesia Bethel with us this morning Dios le bendiga, hermanos. bienvenida a la iglesia Betel esta mañana. Que Dios les bendiga. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Cantar alegres a Dios. All ye lands. Habitantes de toda la tierra. Serve the Lord with gladness. Servir a Jehová con alegría. Come before his presence with singing. Venid ante su presencia con regocijo. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Reconocer que Jehová es Dios. It is he that hath made us. Él nos hizo. And not we ourselves. Y no nosotros a nosotros mismos. We are his people. Pueblo suyo somos. And the sheep of his pasture. Y ovejas de su prado. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Entrad por sus puertas con acción de gracias. And into his courts with praise. Por sus atrios con alabanza. Be thankful unto him. Alabarle. And bless his name. Bendecid su nombre. For the Lord is good. Porque Jehová es bueno. His mercy is everlasting. Para siempre es su misericordia. And his truth endures to all generations. Las I wonder if we can make a joyful noise to the Hallelujah. Lord. Vamos together. A hacer una alabanza fuerte al Señor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We enter your gates with nothing but praise today. I want to magnify your name. I want to declare your greatness among your people. I want to make mention that the Lord is glorious. I want to be elaborate with my words. I want to be demonstrative with my actions. To tell you, Lord, this morning how great and how mighty you are. Come on, would you give him your best praise this morning? Would you give him your highest praise this morning? There's nobody in this building worthy but you, God. There's nobody worthy in this building of my hallelujah but you, Lord. to worship and to praise the Lord thank you for bringing your joyful praise to the Lord today amen amen God bless you you can be seated First, this morning, Primero, hoy día, I, I want to uh, publicly say how much I appreciate um, Daryl and Cindy Collins. Daryl and Cindy Collins. Come on up here, Sister Collins. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Gracias, Señor. Por hermanos today. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel comfortable in interpreting what I have to say about you today? You can be seated. No. <laughs> Pastor Catalan, can you come and do your best to translate for our Hispanic brothers and sisters? I'm going to say a few things. Voy a decir algunas cosas. Amen. Brother and Cindy, uh, brother and sister Collins, you, hermano y hermana Collins, you have stolen my heart. Me ha robado el corazón. And I want to say I love you. Quiero decirles que los amo. You have inspired us. Nos has inspirado a todos. You have impacted us. Nos has impactado también. You have taught us. Nos has eh, conmovido. 
You have led us. Nos has dirigido. You have prepared us. Nos has preparado. You have prayed for us. Has orado por nosotros. You have coached us. Nos has cautivado. You have grown us. Nos hiciste crecer. You have stretched us. Nos has esforzado también. You have changed us. Cambiaste también. You have motivated us. Nos has motivado. You have strengthened us. Nos has este esforzado. You have ministered to us. Nos me administrado también. You have loved us. Y nos has amado también. You have shown us. Nos mostraste. And you have served us. Y nos has servido. I want to say from my heart and on behalf of Bethel Christian Ministries. Quiero decirle con todo mi corazón y, y toda la iglesia Bethel. From all of us, both the English-speaking and the Hispanic-speaking church. Hey, los dos grupos, el inglés y español también. We love and appreciate you. Te amamos y te apreciamos mucho. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hey, I'm sorry. Your labor is not in vain. Tu, tu trabajo no es en vano. May the Lord bless you. Nos has hecho bendecir, en Señor. May He keep you. Y mantener. May His grace guide you. Y la gracia de Dios te guíe. And may He cause you to prosper. Y te da también Dios para que prosperes. Until the day of His return. Hasta que él venga en su venida. Amen. Can you say thank you? Hallelujah. One more time. Gloria a Dios. You came to us has venido hacia nosotros in the very first parts of July en los primeros días de julio and uh, you've been with us now for a has, few months y has estado con nosotros por cuatro meses and it's too quick y es muy rápido <laughs> but you're a part of the Bethel Christian Ministries family. ahora eres parte de, también de Bethel and um, they, uh, their last service is next Sunday morning. El último servicio de ellos es el próximo domingo. And they've got grandkids to go see. Y ya quieren ver a los nietos. And they have more ministry and more churches to start in Texas. Tienen que regresar a levantar más iglesias y otros so ministerios. Our Texas. prayer is with you. And uh, we just have a couple of small things we want to give you. Unas pequeñas cosas como memoria y recuerdo. <laughs> we love you, we love you, we love you. Te queremos, te amamos también. Amen. Aleluya. Amen. God bless you today. Dios les bendiga. I would like to invite Jose and Nelly Catalan and their children. Quiero invitar hermano y hermana Catalan to come and stand que ellos uh, párense aquí in front of us brother palmer if you would join me hermano palmer si puede unirse Just conmigo stand right here and face me please yeah. today we gather together um, uh, and Hoy I nos congramos i want to take time today out of this service yo quiero reservar tiempo de, de este servicio and commission uh, Jose Catalan, para dar carga al hermano Catalan, as pastor of Iglesia Betel, como pastor de la Iglesia Betel. We love you. Mm. Les amamos. We believe in you. También creemos en ustedes. God's hand is on your life. Y el, la mano del Señor está sobre tu vida. His hand is not only on your life. Su mano no solamente está sobre tu vida. But it's on your whole family. También sobre toda la familia. Amen. You may be seated. Puedes sentarse. I feel good about commissioning you. Siento muy bien en cuanto a comisionarles. As pastor of Iglesia Bethel. Como la, uh, pastor de la Iglesia Bethel. Because I see in you Porque yo puedo ver en, en tigo, a love for God's people, un amor por el pueblo de Dios, a love for God's word, y también amor por la palabra de Dios, a strong godly character, y también un carácter uh, piadoso fuerte, and a desire to please God, y un deseo de complacer a Dios. 
I see a desire to put God's kingdom first in you. Yo veo también un deseo de poner el reino de Dios primero en tu vida. I see a good work ethic in you. Yo puedo ver también un, uh, uh, un deseo de trabajar. I see a teachable leader. Yo puedo ver también un líder que es enseñable. I see that you lead your family well. Yo puedo ver que tú guías también tu familia muy bien. I see the joy of the Lord in your spirit. Yo puedo ver también el gozo del Señor en tu espíritu. I see that you do not yield to critics. Yo puedo ver también que no uh, se rinda a los críticos. But you stand in love and faith to God. Pero estás firmes en el amor y la gracia de Dios. I see in you transparency. Veo también en, en, en ti transparencia. You are real. Tú eres real, verdadero. And I see in you a desire for evangelism. Puedo ver también en, en, en tu vida deseo de evangelizar. That this gospel would go to anyone and everyone. Que este evangelio vaya a todos. That would receive it by faith. Que lo reciba por fe. I want to tell you that pastoring. Yo quiero decirte que el pastorear. Is messier than you think. Es, es, es uh, in, involucra más líos que tú piensas. It's better than what you think. Y también es mejor de lo que piensas. Ministry will change you. El ministerio va a cambiarte. For the better. Para lo mejor. Shepherd the ones God gives you. Necesitas pastorear uh, a los que Dios les dé. God is with you. Dios está contigo. We are with you. Nosotros estamos contigo también. I leave you the charge that Paul left Timothy. Uh, te dejo la carga que, que Pablo dejó a Timoteo. I charge thee therefore before God. Cargo, uh, a ti delante de Dios. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Y el Señor Jesucristo. Who shall judge the quick and the dead. Buscará los vivos y los muertos. At his appearing. A su venida. And his kingdom. Y su reino. Preach the word. Predica la palabra. Be instant in season. Es el tiempo y fuera del tiempo. Out of season. Fuera del tiempo. Reprove. Repruebe. Rebuke. Regañe. Exhort with all long suffering. Con toda paciencia. And doctrine. Y doctrina. And lastly, por fin, First Peter five two. Primero uh, de Pedro cinco dos. Through four. Al uh, hasta versículo cuatro. Feed the flock of God which is among you. A presentar la gracia de Dios que está entre vosotros. Taking the oversight thereof. Cuidando de ella. Not by constraint. No por fuerza. But willingly. Sino voluntariamente. Not for filthy lucre. No por ganancia deshonesta. But of a ready mind. Sino con ánimo pronto. Neither is being lords over God's heritage. Ni como tiendo señorío sobre los que están. But being examples to the flock. A vuestro cuidado sino siendo ejemplos de la gracia. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. Y cuando aparezca el príncipe de los pastores. Ye shall receive a crown of glory. Vosotros recibiréis la corona incorruptible that, de gloria. That fadeth not away. Incorruptible. Will you commit to feed the flock? Hermano, um, te prometes a presentar la gre. Will you commit to watch over the flock? Te prometes también... Uh, mirar por la, por la gre. Will you commit to be an example for the flock? También te promete ser ejemplo para la gre. Having agreed to these in the fear of the Lord. Uh, haber, habiendo um, aceptado estas responsibilidades responsibility, we en el temor de Dios. We now will lay our hands upon you. Ahora vamos a imponer las manos. And set you into the pastorate. Hallelujah sobre tu vida. Y también enviarles al pastorado. Would you stand with me as we anoint? Por favor, póngase de pie. Mientras que ungimos.
Lord God, I pray that you would give souls unto Iglesia Bethel. Come on, Iglesia Bethel. Iglesia Bethel, come and pray. Iglesia Bethel, come. Won't you pray around this? Your pastor, thank you, Lord, for our pastor. Thank you for the work of the ministry. I pray that you would set a vision and words in his heart and in his mouth. Lord, let South Omaha hear the gospel. Let the voice of Iglesia Bethel be heard. Let the saints of God rise up. May the strength of the Holy Ghost, Lord, be His companion and His comfort. Lord, let our doors and let our pews be filled with Hispanic brothers and sisters that confess the name of Jesus and receive the gift of grace today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Jesus. Gracias, Señor. Jesus. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Señor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anoint this congregation today. I pray, God, that you would let them grow together in love. Pray that you would let them, God, grow with us as Bethel Christian Ministries. God, I pray that you would keep all jealousy and all strife out of our hearts. That you would let us serve one another as you desire us to serve one another. Let the Spirit of God lead and guide us. Lord, that you would bring people that are hungry for the Word of faith into our hearts and into our lives. Raise up a mighty work, O oh Lord, I pray. For the glory of God. For the glory of God we serve. We serve today. We serve today. Anoint these feet of clay. Keep them from falling, Father. Keep them, Lord, from falling. Lord, I pray, God, a shield about him and a shield about my brothers and sisters. In the name of the Lord, let the saints of God, let the peace of God, Lord, be upon this family and upon this world. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, we need your spirit. We need your anointing. We need the angels of God to minister. We need the angels of God to minister. To bring salvation to us, Lord. To bring healing to us, Lord. We need you, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Mark this day down. Hallelujah. It's an important day. Amen. 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 God bless you today. Thank Dios you, Iglesia bendiga. Bethel. Gracias, Iglesia Bethel. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. For those that maybe have not been involved in this type of, of a service, I just want to say that it, it's the highest position when you have a charge of this. And I just want to say to Pastor Catalan, he is a man of character since the first day I met him. And I just want to clap our hands to the Lord one more time as they exit out and go have church upstairs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. In the way of announcements, November the 11th, next Sunday night, 6 p.m., will be fellowship night. How many like fellowship? Amen. Well, five of us will be there for fellowship night. Hopefully, you all will also be involved in the chili cook-off. There's only five of us. Chili cook-off, November the 11th, next Sunday evening, 6 p.m., if you'd like to participate in the cook-off, please sign up at the MyBCM desk in the foyer. If you're not making chili, we're asking that you bring a side dish or dessert. Drinks will be provided. We will have judging on the chili with prizes for the top three. Top three, so we at least need three. You might be three out of three, 
It might be one out of three, but it's a good time of fellowship, games, and activities. Contact the office if you have any questions regarding this event. Also, during the winter months, we're going to have a kind of a coffee fellowship beginning Sunday, November 18th, 9.40 a.m. It will be on the third Sunday of each month, 9.40 a.m., third Sunday of each month, beginning November the 18th, there will be a time of coffee and some more fellowship in the foyer before service. Also, remember all the upcoming events. You can look at the calendars online, the live calendar in there, CCB. Amen. It's good to have some fellowship. Let's stand together as the ushers prepare for this morning, Sunday morning tithe and offering, Sunday school offering. Amen. Amen. It was in 1991 that I found myself in a hospital praying for a man who was dying of AIDS. And I was told that I shouldn't go in to pray with this man, that he was very contagious. And he had open wounds. And I had to put a whole lot of gear on. And I remember just asking God for a miracle. I wanted really God to just touch him. And I was asked to pray for him. And I, I'm saying this to say this one little part of this whole story. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. But as I was praying for this man and just believing God that, A, he was going to protect me uh, of, of not catching anything in, in this room, and whether it was airborne, or I, I just asked God to take every fear from me that I would just be able to lay hands on him and transmit something on him in the end of his life. And, and he whispered as quiet as he could in my ear this one thing at the end. He said, I know that my body is deteriorating and my tongue uh, is deteriorating and not to get real graphic, but I want you to just understand that he whispered in my ear that they can, my hands can be removed from this disease and my feet can be removed from this disease and my tongue can be removed from this disease, but they can never take away my song. That's within me. And that stuck with me. And so none of us here have lost our tongues. So there's really no excuse for us. But I just wanted to say that, you know, singing unto the Lord and worshiping unto the Lord is an incredible thing. So as we pray today for this offering, I just want somebody to sing unto the Lord, uh, praise the Lord for a prayer offering in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we just worship you today. And thank you that we can sing a song in our heart, in our mind, within us, God. The bowels with inside of us sing unto you, Lord, that you would bless this offering, God. That we want to be cheerful givers, God, unto the kingdom of the Lord. God, that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh, God. And just as the last days of that man, God, his mind was on you. So we give unto you, Lord, knowing that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. So bless it, God. Bless our worship and our praise unto you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Worship the Lord as you give today. Sing unto the Lord as you give today. Follow your ushers from the back to the front in Jesus' name. I can do anything. I can do all things. But it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you. Blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is
somebody and say, I believe, I believe that the Lord is able to do His good pleasure in me. Amen. Welcome this morning to the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad you're here today? Amen. As you remain standing, I'm going to get right into the word of the Lord today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Starting with verse 10, it says, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Somebody say, His Spirit. God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things. Somebody say, all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Say deep things. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have not received, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things, these things that God has given to us, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Everybody say, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. I want to talk to you today and probably the next four Sundays on this simple thought, deeper things. Turn to somebody and say, God has deeper things for you. There's something deeper for you in God today. 
You can be seated. Amen. I am so thankful that you are here today. I'm so thankful that Jesus Christ is here today. For where two or three are gathered together uh, by faith, there He is in their midst. I believe Jesus is here this morning. I believe that. I want to talk to you about icebergs. How many of you have seen real icebergs before? Icebergs. There's a unique relationship between uh, the ice and the water of the ocean since the density of pure water ice is so many kilograms and that of the seawater is contrasted to the density of the ice, typically only around 90% of the volume or the mass of the iceberg, uh, 90% of that is underwater. So whenever you see, if you get the opportunity to, to see an iceberg, you are only seeing 10% of its total mass. Ten percent. Simply put, that if you only look at the surface of that iceberg and try to describe what it is, its shape, how large it is, you will be woefully short of really describing what it really is. You will miss it. But if you could go a little deeper, if you could get beyond just the surface, just what the human eye could see on the surface, you would find that there's a whole lot more underneath the thing. Underneath what eyes can see. And that really is the majority of the iceberg. But we live visually, and the only thing we have to see is what's on top of the, of the water. And so I say that's really shallow, uh, a really shallow understanding. How many of you like exercising? Well, there's only a few, I thought. To some, it is the avoidable at all costs. It is to be avoided. But those of you that lifted your hands, making the rest of us feel lesser than we should. You know, that, that natural man, or you or as a natural man or woman, exercise because you like it. You raised your hand. And I'm glad you like exercising, but there is a deeper value to exercising. While what you see is somebody jogging, or what you see is somebody riding a bike, or playing tennis, or whatever your choice of exercise might be, the reality is I'm glad you like exercising, but there's a whole lot more to exercising than just enjoying the experience. The enjoyment is the tip of the iceberg. That's it. But if a person, as, as you get older, you'll find that the doctor's language is going to change when you go see him. He is going to insist that your food consumption go down and your exercise go up. Because he realizes that as you get older, there's some deeper things on the line than you just enjoying riding your bicycle or taking a walk. Somebody say deeper things. How many of you like to eat steamed broccoli? It's good stuff. I like steamed broccoli. Yum. 
But eating steamed broccoli has a deeper value than just the party in my mouth. Because vegetables supply something deeper and more meaningful to my body than just I like it. Again, eating vegetables is good. You like the taste of some, you don't like the taste of others. But the point of eating vegetables is a point that goes into the cellular makeup of your body. And it goes into the functioning of the systems of your body physiologically. And when you eat right, your body functions better. So I'm glad that you like the taste of broccoli. But I come to tell you this morning that there's something deeper than just the fact that you like it. Somebody say deeper. Having a budget because you like to work with numbers is a good thing. I'm glad you're a bean counter. But can I tell you that having a budget goes far deeper than you feeling good about working with numbers. That having a budget financially will increase the likelihood of your financial solidarity. <laughs> Hello. Because a budget was not designed just to make you feel good. It's designed to produce something in your finances. And so I say there's a deeper value to just liking the fact that you can work with numbers and you have a budget. The natural man is sight driven. He has eyes and feelings. He's surface level. He sees only the tip of the iceberg. That natural man, that's you and I. And, and that's when we look at something and when we experience something so often, we only capture the smallest minute part of what something really is. Sad to say that many of us live on the surface level of things. Marriage sounds good, but I'm going to tell you there's a whole lot more than just the wedding day when you start to consider getting married. It's sad, but sometimes the reason why marriages fail is because they put more effort on the small part that is seen than they do on the part that is unseen. How and where you stand on your wedding day doesn't define your marriage. <laughs> but how you live day to day when no one sees does define your marriage. In all of our aspects of life, there is a tendency to pay more attention to just the 10% because it's what we see. And what is seen gets the most attention. Because of this, spiritual things are often discounted, overlooked, and neglected because they are deeper things and not visible on the surface. They're spiritual things. The Bible says in our opening text that the natural man does not perceive or even see or acknowledge the spiritual things. And yet the spiritual things are the most important things. They're the deeper things. And even the spirit of man does not have any desire to deep dive into the spiritual things. 
That natural man is satisfied with the 10% that he sees and he judges everything by the 10% that he is able to perceive. Let me give you an example. On the outside, he was a man. He ate. He slept in a boat. He got hungry. He wept often. He was tempted. He was filled with sorrow. He went to funerals. He went to festivals. He felt alone. He was misunderstood. He got angry. There were nights he couldn't sleep. He had a mother. He had cousins. He wore shoes. He had to shave and cut his hair. He had to take a bath. He had to brush his teeth. He had to wash his hands. He had to go to the bathroom. He enjoyed time with people. He needed time alone. His muscles would ache after a long day of walking. He laughed. He went to weddings. He washed his employees' feet. He went to visit friends. He was loved and he was hated. He was welcomed and he was rejected. He grew. He was a toddler. He was a 12-year-old. Now, doesn't that say it all? He was a 12-year-old and then an adult. Well, all these things are true about Jesus the Christ. There was still something deeper at work in Him. He was the spiritual iceberg. What you saw was not even a fraction of what and who He really was. Think about that. Deeper realities and truths were resident within him whether you perceived them or not. And life and death literally hang in the balances as to whether or not you're able to get beyond what your eyes see and get into the deeper things of who he was. The natural man could not comprehend. He was just like us. And yet I take you to the book of Matthew chapter 8. And I let you see just glimpses of what was beneath that frail flesh we call Christ. uh, In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1, When He, Jesus, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed Him. And behold, there came a leper, and worshipped Him, saying, Lord, if Thou wilt, Thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth His hand and touched Him, saying, I will. Be Thou clean. And immediately His leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way and show thyself to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. This man went deeper than just the skin that outlined the man. So much so that he he recognized that this man had something to offer him that no other man could offer him. And he asked him, hey, can you make me clean? Matthew chapter 14 is yet another place where we see a glimpse of something that is deeper than just the flesh of Christ. Matthew 14, verse 25, the disciples are rowing in a storm-tossed lake fearing for their very lives. And the Bible says that in verse 25, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. 
Now that's different. Because there's deeper things. Things that defied the laws of gravity that were resident on the inside. Deeper than just what the outside could sense. In John chapter 11, we find amid all of the the realities that Jesus was a man, we, we find another glimpse yet that there was something deeper to Him. John chapter 11, Lazarus has died. The mourners have come. It's been four days since uh, Lazarus took his last breath. Jesus summons to the people. He weeps a little bit. I can identify with weeping. I can identify with being hurt. But he says to someone, a guard or someone standing by that looked like they had enough muscle, he pointed at them and he said, take the stone away from the mouth of the tomb. The man or the men decided to be obedient to this would-be stranger and they watched as this man, as it were, just the tip of the iceberg, stood at the mouth of that uh, open now tomb and he spoke words down into the, to the caverns that were below and his words bounced off of the walls uh, and his words were simply, Lazarus, come forth. Now any man anywhere could stand in a graveyard today and say, all y'all, get up. And I'm quite sure that nobody is going to get up. But this man, although he was like us, there was something deeper in him so that when he stood in front of the grave itself and he sent a word in a command that that which had drawn its last last breath some four days earlier began to breathe and took a breath again Woo! can I tell you that there was something deeper to Jesus than just his flesh but all we see is just the tip of the iceberg Somebody say deeper things. In Mark chapter 4, verse 39, again, a dilemma at sea. This time Jesus asleep on the boat. I can identify. But there's something deeper to the Lord Jesus. The disciples had come to the point they thought, truly, this is our last day on earth. They rush to the belly, to the bottom, and there find Jesus fast asleep. They wake Him in fear of losing their life. And Jesus arouses Himself, goes to the top of the boat and to the bow. He stands on the bow and He says to the wind, and He says, to the waves. Peace. Be still. I can understand being afraid. I can understand sleeping. But what blows my mind about this Jesus is that He had power over the wind. And He exercised power over the way. There was something deeper to Jesus than the fact that He had a mother named Mary. Deeper things. Spiritual things. Powerful things. Life-changing things. Would you indulge me again and say deeper things? He fed a multitude of 5,000 with a small happy meal. He turned water into wine. Deeper things. He gave sight to the blind, deeper things. They led him about, uh, they led him about falsely, uh, 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 they lied about him and they falsely accused him. He forgave them. They beat him. They nailed him to a tree. Jesus refused the notion, however, that they killed him. For he says in John chapter 10, verse 18, no man taketh my life from me. 
but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. I've come to tell you that lay it down, He did. And take it up again, He did. On the third day, He got up on His own power. Someday I will die. And you'll put me in a box and you'll bury me. But I will never be able to say to myself, Self, get up. Why? Because there was something deeper about Jesus than what met the eye. I don't know if you were to see Jesus if you would be even remotely impressed. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt if Jesus were to come in shoe leather today that we would go, wow! Why? Because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they only perceive the tip of the iceberg. I'm preaching about deeper things this morning. Not only was Jesus flesh, we realize that, but Jesus was God. That changes everything. He was God, robed or veiled in flesh. Look at this. Colossians 2.9, the New Living Translation says, For in Christ lives All the fullness of God in a human body. Now we shout over that because we understand deeper things. But the natural man only sees the body. First Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was justified in the spirit. God was seen of angels. God preached unto the Gentiles. God was believed on in the world. And God was received up into glory. We shout about the deeper things. 2 Corinthians 5.19 For God was in Christ. It was, there was something deeper to that man from Galilee. And how many people dismissed him because they judged how, who and what he was by what they saw with their natural eyes. God was so much more. He was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Some people saw him As a troublemaker, they couldn't see that the God of the ages was reaching out to them in love. When they nailed him to a tree, some thought that they had done the world a favor. What they didn't realize was that they were fulfilling God's plan of redemption. Deeper things. I want to read to you Matthew chapter 9. The scariness of the moment so many missed him because they were only looking at the surface. There was a man, they brought a man that was sick lying on a bed put the sick in front of Jesus and Jesus says in Matthew chapter 9 verse 2 son be of good cheer thy sins be forgiven thee those that heard him say that shook their head in in some kind of an amazement and, and, and they were dumbfounded by a man who would tell somebody that their sins were forgiven. They couldn't, it didn't compute. It said recalculating. Because when you looked at Jesus only as a natural man, you would make this simple conclusion that He is a man. 
And as a man, a man cannot forgive sins. But what they couldn't see was that it was more than just a man. Look, it says it here. Verse 3. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. Watch this. Jesus knowing their thoughts, there's something deeper to the Lord Jesus. He knew what they... How many of you know what I'm thinking right now? How many of you know what your neighbor's thinking? We get into trouble when we assume we know what people are thinking, don't we? We get in trouble in our marriage because we assume we know what our spouses want. And sometimes, we, even though we live with them, we don't know what they want. Some of you that are single need to write that down. You don't know what your spouse is thinking. We don't know sometimes what we're even thinking. But Jesus knew their thoughts. And he says to them, Whether it is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to arise and walk, but that you may know the Son of Man hath power on the earth to forgive sins. He says to the one, the sick of the palsy, who's lame, he says, take up your bed and go unto your house. And the man gets up, takes his bed, and he goes home. Jesus wasn't having an identity crisis. People were having an issue with going into the deeper things of what Jesus and who Jesus was. See, there's, there's a problem. They stumbled. Do you see how the people would stumble at the stone? They stumbled at Christ because they were looking only at the visual part. But there was so much more. Whether there was a, a crowd of five or, or whether there was a, a, a crowd of ten or, or a thousand, you know, people that are looking after the flesh, they look at the followers of Jesus uh, the, the followers of G, and say, well, you know, he's not really making very much of an impact because they're looking at numbers and they were looking at Jesus. He's only got five people with him. Who are they? But the people that understood who he was and went deeper, they said, I'd rather have no other audience staying right here. Some people looking at the flesh would look at Jesus today and say, if he had 5,000, man, he's doing something right because they would judge by the moment and by what they were seeing. But really, when Jesus preached one message, everybody left him. Church shut down, doors closed. He turns to his disciples and said, hey, you guys are going to go too? The disciples said, hey, no, no, there are deeper things here than just a multitude. There are some things that are going on here that we would be foolish to abandon. Somebody say deeper things. So let's talk about going to church. The natural eye says something like this. Well, I'm glad to have a place for the kids to go on Sunday. That's true. The natural man says, there's going to be music. That's true. The natural man says, I'm going to get to see some of my peeps. All true. The natural man wonders, though, in the same breath, will I like it? Will I like the music? Will I know anyone? Will I fit in? What other flavors of churches are there? Do they have anything for me today? These are the words and the voices of the natural man. When it comes to any place, but specifically this morning, you are here at 3702 Giles Road. And there's voices of the natural man that are coming out. There, are, there is a perception of the natural man that says, wow, well, you know. it is said that within, uh, within 11 minutes of anybody walking into a church, they've already made a decision whether or not they're going to return. Think about that. What are they basing their decision on? 10%. It's what their natural man sees. And we all do it. You walk into a restaurant, you already make decisions whether you're going to go back or not. You haven't even tasted the food yet. And you're already making judgments as to whether or not this place gets a star from you 
or not. Oh, don't be sheepish with me this morning. It's the effect of the natural man. We all do it. It is the natural man that judges everything around him, even on very incomplete information. So let's talk about the church. Going to church is a funny statement in and of itself. But there are deeper things that are at play when someone just goes to church. Did you know that people that attend church regularly are healthier people by and in large? Studies have proved it. I don't know really how they come about this, but there are articles upon articles that say that, that it boosts the immune system. Now, I don't know because that's, you're exposed to so many you know, you know, allergies and stuff. I don't think that's it. But there's something about going to church that has a health value to it. They say that if, if you attend church regularly, it adds three to four years to your life. How many of you would like three more years? Go to church. Regularly. You know, it's, it's an amazing fact that when you said regularly 40 years ago, that was three times a week. Sunday morning. Sunday night, across all denominal lines. Sunday, I'm a regular church goer. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Right? Today, you can ask the same question. What is a regular church attender? And it's people that may go once a month. Shocking, right? Not really. Did you know that, that it is on record and documented that people who attend church, they have, they have uh, the, it decreases their blood pressure. There's deeper things going on than you just going to church. Somebody say deeper. Do you know that studies show that when you go to church, there's, uh, you, you are statistically, you have a better social support system than people that do not go to church? Let's talk about going to church. Do you know that at church, people look out for one another? Really, it's true. Your social network gets bigger. You know, when you go to work, you work beside somebody, but generally, if you're sick, they're not going to come see you. They might sit at your desk and eat your candy in the third drawer down, but they may not come and see you. But when you step into a church, there's something different about the makeup of a church, and there is a sense of responsibility to engage in people's life around them. People that care People that'll, when you're going through something, it's the church that'll give you, hey, can I pray with you? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. When you, when you, when you, you know, when you're, when your teenagers get, want to get married, you're trying to find somebody that cares enough about them because that young man about to marry your girl needs the truth spoken into him. You seek out a church that you trust and you know. Say, would you help me through all of life's circumstances? What a social network that is beyond just a normal person. Makes sense. Friendship, emotional support, people connected to the church have a larger social network and have more affection and acceptance. And so, so many times, people that are only looking in the natural say, well, there's no acceptance. I've, I've come to tell you, you can't find more acceptance than in a church. More long-suffering with your issues. Some of your family even threw you to the side of the road. But the church is saying, if you're hurting, that's okay. Come on, let us pray with you. Deeper things. Let's talk about going to church. 
It says that you're healthier, you have healthier behavior. You drink less, smoke less, use fewer recreational drugs, less sexual promiscuity. You use less foul language. You have a higher moral standard. All because you're going to go to church. But there's something deeper than just showing up at a location. There's life-changing stuff that happens when you go to church. Some of your teenagers are going to be spared a horrible future because you are just going to church. There's something deeper going on. What goes on is so much deeper than any other club that you can find going on here or there. I, I always get a kick. I'm going to pastor just for a minute. I always get a kick out of people who get their kids involved in sports to the point that they are missing church and don't care that their kids are in church, but they will make sure that their children are in sports events. I've got a question for you. When your child really needs something, who's going to be there? What really is deeper in athletics that passes the church? I say nothing. I say absolutely nothing goes deeper than what the church is reaching for nothing somebody say deeper we can even go deeper do you know that the church is the place where we experience God how deep is that right that church is the one thing that all of its focus and all of its passion and all of its drive and all of its energy is centered around one thing. It's not to attract the natural man, but it is to transform the inner man. The deeper things of a man and a woman. The issue with the sinner is not that they are you know, sleeping around all the time. The issue is something The issue is not that there's pathological lying going on. There is something deeper within the heart of man. And the church is poised and focused with the only message that can transform the soul of man. And yet I wonder how many people are judging the church by 10% of what they see. I close. So many people turn to psychiatry, pharmaceuticals, and surgery to deal with them mentally, emotionally, and physically, but the church says we also have an answer. And his name is Jesus. It's a God connection. He's still the counselor. He's still the great provider. He's still shalom, the peace that passes all under. He is still the only hope of the world. See, when you have a God connection, it decreases stress. Can I get an amen? See, when you connect with God, it's better than a relationship with any other person on the planet. You can have a BFF all you want, but it'll never do for you what the nail-scarred, handed Savior can do for you. Going to church and, and having a God connection helps deal with failure. Can I get an amen? Helps deal with regret. Helps deal with fear. Having a God connection moves people to forgiveness. It teaches people how to love. It helps people to learn who they are and why they were created. Having a God connection keeps them, uh, uh, gives them an opportunity to give their lives back to something more than a candy bar and a Coke. Having a God connection teaches reference. Having a God connection provides accountability. Having a God, God connection gives a moral standard higher than our culture and personal preference. Having a God connection is an inspiration for living. Having a God connection gives power to overcome the sin and the habit. Somebody say deeper. I can go deeper than that. Church is more than just a spiritual Walmart for you. It's more than a super target for you. 
It's all of those things, but there's deeper. How deep can you go? You're going to get tired before you find the bottom. Listen to this. Church is more than just a spiritual Walmart. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, the human body has many parts, but many parts make up the whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. You hear me? Some of us are Jews. Some of us are Gentiles. Some are slaves. Some are free. But all have been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we are all, we all share the same spirit. Colossians chapter 1, Christ himself is the creator who made everything in heaven and earth. The things we can see and the things we can't see. The spirit world and its kings and kingdom, its rulers and authority. All were made by Christ for his own use and glory. He was before all else began and it, it, his pow- it is his power that holds everything together. He, Christ, is the head of the body made up of his people called His church, which He began. He is the leader of all those who arise from the dead so that He is first in everything. Finally, Hebrews 12, 23, you have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children. When you're just going to church, my friend, that's just the tip of the iceberg. But when you step, I I, I pray you catch this. When you step into this room today, it's more than a geographical location. There is a spiritual dimension of deeper things that you're stepping into the very body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And He purchased it with His own blood and His own spirit. called his church let's talk about the church let's stand can I tell you not everything has the same value in your life some things in your life are of equal value there are other things that are of greater value And sometimes, one, you, must decide which things have the greatest value in your life. And if need be, those things that have lesser value must be auctioned off, must be moved out of the way, and not take up the space so that you can have the greater thing, the deeper thing. How about you today? Are you willing to come lay the lesser things on this altar this morning and make a commitment to the deeper things of the Spirit of God? If you're here this morning, simple altar call. Are you willing to lay down some lesser things and commit to the deeper things? If that's you, why don't you come? As they sing... Why don't you just lay it out to the Lord? Say, I'm not looking with my natural man. I've been guilty. But today I commit. I acknowledge there's great value in spiritual things. In Jesus' name. Even when I fail you.
today, as you lift your hands today, come on, I want you to release some lesser things to God. You're hanging on to relationships. You're hanging on to video games. You're hanging on to Lord. No, you're hanging on to your job. You're hanging on to... But there's deeper things at play in your life today. There's a God who's saying, would you give me your all? Come on, lift your hands and say, God, help me. Help me <laughs> to desire the deeper things. <laughs> help me, God, to go beyond what my eyes see and my ears hear and what I want. But help me to press into the deeper things. Thank you, Lord. I surrender. Take the lesser things out of my life and replace it with the deeper things of your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. I know you love me. God bless you this morning. May the peace of God rule your life. This is Clem's last service. He's going to be doing some traveling. Still has a home in Omaha, I understand. But could we get a couple of men to come around and just pray over him that the peace of God, the strength of God, the protection of God would go with him today. Father, we thank you for Clem. I thank you for your grace in his life.